Bonnie's Insider is brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Bonnie's Insider brought to you by Universal Primary Care. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Tommy Valentine. Well, we have a very similar theme to this week's show that we saw last week. Our player profile highlights yet another one of St. Bonaventure's student athletes who is leaving their mark on more than just the athletic field, junior softball player Madison Stewart. And in just a moment, our alumni spotlight stays on the hardwood with another men's basketball alumnus who is taking the basketball training world by storm. But that's not all that's on the docket. Head women's basketball coach Jesse Fleming is in for the return of Coach's Corner, and we'll meet with a few of our international student athletes who will be sharing their experiences over the summer. Leading off the show is perhaps the hottest name going right now as far as Bonas alums. One of the top three-point shooters in Bonaventure basketball history, Chris Matthews has gone from lighting up the Riley Center to becoming one of the most well-known NBA and WNBA skill coaches in the world. With over a million followers on Instagram, the man known to most as Lethal Shooter is shaping the jumpers of the game's best players. My reason for picking St. Bonaventure is it felt like it was a family at the university. And the one thing that I was really big on is like the coaching staff. They were real adamant on like, hey, you know, we are placed right here in Atlantic 10, but we are going to make a rise. And um, we're going to do it this way and do it that way. And the way that they were talking, I could tell they were serious about basketball with Coach Schmidt. He's really going to get the best out of you. And I can say that him, Coach Moore, Coach Dino, Coach Fist with the weights, they was able to get something um, out of me as well that, you know, I, I didn't know I had it myself. I would say I made the best decision ever by going to St. Bonaventure just because of how I would say that it gets the best out of you and how the university is, especially, you know, with the academics as well. Like they really pushed me to, to learn um, because at the time I didn't I didn't really want to do schoolwork, but that, that university really pushed me to do my school work and to understand what it takes to have a life after basketball. See, the RC is a very unique place. So I was playing in the Pac-10, so I played in sold out arenas and bigger arenas. But I would say the rally is probably the best arena that I've played in because the fans are right over top of you and you can feed off the energy plan in the uh, rally center. The students right on top of the opposing team kind of helps you like talk trash to the other teams and stuff like that because you know the student section has your back and even me now helping other colleges and, and going around the world to train, I would say that there's no arena that's better than the Rally Center. I love the Rally Center. And I definitely take honor in coming to a program that a lot of people didn't believe in. And when I came in, I knew for a fact that we were gonna be able to turn that place around. Having Coach Fist so drilling you every single day at six in the morning and making you lift tires and push vans together as a team and, and doing different things, like I knew that that program was gonna change. And it's a blessing to see where St. Bonham Richard basketball is now, because like you said, I was I was there during the tough time, it was in the tough practices to watch everything that was going on to that. So it's definitely a blessing to see where the program is and, and, and continue to see it rise. So coaching has been a major part of my life since like I would say middle school, when my coach in middle school as well used to allow me to like, if, if we're gonna do this play, I say, hey, maybe this play. I say, hey, watch out for this, watch out for that. So it's always been in me and, you know, why not be a coach? Why not be a shooting coach and teach what you love to do every single day? And so far it's been very successful because my clients have definitely seen turnarounds uh, with their shooting when, when they train with me. But working with NBA players has been a blessing. My ability to help them with the art of shooting and most importantly, let them understand what it takes to be an elite shooter. My senior year, I was blessed to be top seven in the nation and threes made in my senior year, I was number one in Atlantic 10. So the same philosophy that I used when I was at St. Bonaventure is the same philosophy I use when I teach my NBA clients. You have to do this every single day. You have to master this every single day. You can't take breaks. If this is the time you're going to shoot, you have to shoot. And I learned that, like I said, from Coach Schmidt. Like if, if you practice at 1 o'clock, you want to try your best to be there at 12, 15, get warmed up, get ready, and, and be ready for the practice at 1. If practice is over at 3 o'clock, that doesn't mean you leave right at 3 o'clock. Maybe get a few shots up for about 20 minutes and then get out of there. Training those NBA players is, is just a blessing because I just use everything that I, that was taught to me on a level of excellence and a part of my training on top of my changes that I make. So I love it and it's pretty easy to me. Having a big platform shows that my training does work. I use my platform for positive energy and just teaching people that, you know, all of us can make it in life, spreading 
um, equality and letting people understand that, you know, all of us were born here for a reason and all of us um, are loved by God. The, the philosophy of St. Bonaventure, that place is like one of the best places that, you know, everybody's accepted. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, how tall you are, it's just the love there is remarkable. And that's what I try to do through my platform so people can understand their worth on earth. If you're looking for a university that you're gonna be accepted, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, how tall you are, how rich or poor you are, this is the university for you because everybody's going to welcome you with open arms. Everybody's going to receive you and everybody's going to help you make it in life because it's not even just Coach Schmidt, not even um, the, the, the coach and staff. They, they were people, teachers, students that actually, when I was having a hard time there, they helped me make it in life. And, you know, St. Bonaventure's curriculum isn't the easiest curriculum in the world. It's a curriculum that you have to really study. You have to really you know, it's going to make you think out of the box. I remember my last paper there, I had to write like, write like 50 pages and I didn't want to do it. But when I did it, I realized like it, it helped me expand my mind because the paper was, where do you see your, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where, how do you see yourself? How do you see that? And I still have that paper to this day because the one thing I can say about St. Saint, Saint Bonaventure is it, it's going to help expand your mind. It's going to help you understand, you know, your reason in life. And it's, and it's a place where like I told you before, you're always welcome and it's a great university. You don't have to look far down the Bonnie's record book to find Matthew's name. He ranks second all time for most three point field goals made in a season and sixth in career three pointers. I also think he's right near the top of the list for most consecutive threes made on a peach basket, but nothing's official there. Switching gears now to our Bonaventure student athletes. This past summer extracted a heavy toll on countless individuals within the Bonas community, especially our international student athletes who were scattered across the world over the summer. Some making it home, others who are now going on almost a year since last seeing their families. In this next segment, they share with us their experiences both overseas and on campus during those long summer months. My captain and I spend the summer together here. Uh, there are other student athletes on campus and it was honestly really tough, one of the toughest periods of my life. But it was good, you learn stuff about yourself, you learn to persevere through situations, you find other things to occupy your time. It was of course uh, tough being, being away from home for, for this, much, this much amount of time. Uh, it was, it's, it's almost one year now and um, summer was long, I, I have to, to be honest. Um, days were, were, were you know, really long. My, my idea was to, was to go back home because it's tough being here as an international and you, you miss uh, your, your family. But COVID hit um, on February, late February, so I had to reschedule my, my plane tickets. You know, talking with my parents also, um, they, they told me that the, the best thing would, would be to stay here. They literally closed like all the airports, the special the international airports, international flights, so it was just like ever closed. I even had a plane ticket to go back to my country, but unfortunately it was impossible, so I had to stay. It's pretty tough, to be honest, because it's been almost like a year me being away from my parents of course like they miss me i miss them but unfortunately that was what it had to be when everything started here i was uh constantly like running between my townhouse and uh yvette's office to like kind of figure things out like can we keep our visa and all that stuff then i was like you know what i'm just gonna book the flight i'm trying to get out of here and actually i've never seen a flight with like that many students on it and i like, also like people coming from Germany itself. Basically back home, we didn't have another case for like another two weeks, I think. Everyone was just like dealing pretty well with it at that point, but then when just like infections uh, started to grow, everything literally just shut down. Pools, uh, gyms, like literally all sporting facilities. The, the school provided me a, a townhouse for, for myself. Um, it was actually better than, than going back home to Argentina. At least here I was able to go out of the, of the house. Uh, I mean, overall, I feel like I was, you know, keeping myself busy, going, going for a run, maybe doing some physical activities. You know, I had my, my PlayStation, for example, and stuff. So, yeah, overall, I tried to keep myself busy, yeah. I played a lot of soccer, like in the parking lots, in the wall by the Richter, went on a lot of runs, a lot of bike rides. <laughs> I remember I broke a window. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, but I, I need to, somewhere to practice. Everything started to like open up like very, very slowly, and we had to start uh, doing dry lens first. We had to have like the six feet 
distance between each other. We had to be like outside, like we couldn't be in a closed room. So like dryland was pretty much the first practices that we had to do for like a couple weeks. After like a month or so, we were able to get back into the water, but only for like, I think 45 minutes. I was going for a run almost every day. There was a trial over here. I wasn't coming home. I wasn't coming to my townhouse until I do like 10,000 steps a day. I started to play volleyball. It was something new for me that I was going outside. I bought a ball from Walmart and I practiced like almost every day for it. And I'm pretty good now, actually. It's been three months. <laughs> I really enjoy being back here uh, with my team and I also being able to get back into the pool. Everything is kind of back to normal in a certain way. Like, yes, of course, we have to wear a mask and like we have to uh, so distance a little bit when we warm up and stuff, but it's getting there. It's getting better. Day in, day out, you're doing the same thing. There's nothing else to do. You're trying new things. It really takes a toll on your mental. And then you have to like dig into yourself because like, depression is a real thing. You can choose how you want to go about it. Like, are you just going to stay sad or are you going to try and do something that motivates you, something that you love and can get better at? I remember me and Shay, the late nights just talking about this, being able to be back here and being able to play. It's actually incredible. And we wish all our international student athletes the best of luck with their seasons. I'm sure your families back home are just as proud of your hard work and determination this offseason as we are here at SBU. Jesse Fleming leads us off after the break with Coach's Corner. You're watching Bonnie's Insider brought to you by UPC. What's the best way to pick the right college? Use your head and make a practical choice based on cost and academics? Or follow your heart to a place that just feels right? At St. Bonaventure, you can do both. Here, you'll join a unique community that celebrates individuality, meet professors as passionate about people as they are about learning, and form lifelong connections without a lifetime of debt. Come see for yourself why St. Bonaventure isn't just a special place, it's a smart choice. Schultz is always at your service, ensuring your vehicle gets the maintenance it requires. Now, with modern, touchless options across the entire auto care experience. Speak with a service advisor on the phone or at one of our newly envisioned service centers. Pay invoices online or via mobile app. And drive home in confidence knowing Schultz only permits limited personnel access to your vehicle. Exceeding expectations is our mission. That's why the next generation of auto care is already here at Schultz. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider brought to you by UPC. It has been a storybook journey to becoming a head coach for Jesse Fleming. After four years as the head team manager under Jim Crowley, Fleming climbed the assistant coaching ranks, beginning at Bonaventure and ending at Bowling Green. Four years ago, he stepped inside the Riley Center for the first time at the helm of his alma mater's women's basketball team. And while Fleming is a true veteran of the game, nothing could have prepared him for the challenge of preparing a team for a season amid a pandemic. But Fleming is up to the task as we met with him in this week's Coach's Corner. It's different than a lot of alma maters, you know, I mean, it's, it's uh, when we recruit student athletes to, to be able to say, you know, that I, I was actually a student that sat in, you know, that sat in the chairs and I'll, and I'll say when we're recruiting student athletes, you know, I still walk by professors in the hallway that I, that I know and, and you don't get that a lot of other places. Um, just the, the family feel and, um, you know, you, you meet your best friends here and, and everything that people talk about, it's a, it's a real thing. And so I think it, it makes you put in a little, little extra effort. You know, it's not a, it is a business here, um, but there's also a big family aspect to it and um, a community aspect to it. And so you, you really do, you really do work hard to represent Bonaventure. I thought I was going to be a, a lawyer uh, when I when I came here and kind of fell in love with the with the with the process of, the, of coaching and and uh, really respected a guy like Coach Crowley and and kind of put in the work um, and he gave me an opportunity at a really young age after working with the team for a few years and that was kind of what got me into it. I just I've, I've I enjoyed the process of making a team better and seeing seeing what that team can do and their to reach their capabilities. I've taken pieces from everybody that I've worked for. Um, I would say Jim Crowley is the biggest influence on, on me as far as 
uh, just his discipline um, and the work that he put in every day. He never uh, never shortchanged a day. He was constantly thinking about how to make the team the best possible version that they could be. When I moved on to Stony Brook, learned a lot recruiting-wise uh, with Bethel Boyle. She's a really good defensive coach um, as well. Took some things from there. Um, went to Bowling Green um, and, and worked for Jennifer Roos where we ran 100 plays and really learned a lot about offensive basketball. I learned a lot from Mark Schmidt um, just as far as how he runs a practice and, and how he prepares his teams through the years. I want to be able to play two-way basketball. Well, I want to have two-way players. I want to be able to get stops, push it, score the thing at the other end. Um, I love versatile players that can that can do a little bit of everything: shoot it, drive it, play, make, rebound. You know, defend three or four positions. Um, that's that's who we want to be, and that's that's who I like to coach. We, we've got an experienced team coming back, um, bringing back uh, six players that. Uh, that all contributed quite a bit. Got a lot of experience, a lot of minutes that have played a lot of A-10 games um, or a lot of college basketball games with uh, with some of the transfers that we've brought in. I, I like our depth a lot more. I think we can go eight or nine deep. I love our experience at the guard spot with Deja Francis and Asian Egg being three-year starters. Uh, putting uh, Tori Harris uh, in, coming from James Madison to really shoot the ball for us. And then Emily's a four-year starter for us. So really kind of ahead of the schedule this year of where we've been in the past, and, and we're excited. We've got a solid core of returners, and that really helps the newcomers. Um, it gets them up to speed a lot a lot faster. Ayana and, and, and Tori and Star, they've all played a lot of college basketball, know how things are supposed to be done. They know what a winning basketball team looks like. Really like that mix, you know, bringing in some experience right away. They're not really Really true freshmen and then we've got a couple freshmen that we think um, can contribute right away that uh, that have really learned quickly learned they learn from their mistakes um, they're confident kids um, coming from winning programs and, and Morgan Gentile and Maddie Diskowski um, so I think it's a really really nice mix of some experience um, some experience from other places and some newcomers next step is just learn how to win now I've been through it here before where you kind of accumulate talent but there's a difference between having talent and talent that knows how to win you know our, our focus is just in everything we do right now of, of great we've got some abilities and people that can shoot it attack it defend rebound all that stuff but but who are the winners in those winning time moments uh, are we going to take advantage because we've got the experience you know we, we there, there's nothing to be said of with oh it's a youth thing or anything like that. they've they've cut their teeth in in the rugged a10 um, and now it's now it's time to take that next step and I'm, and I'm hoping that we've been in that meat grinder long enough that that now we're ready to take that next step Plenty of reason to be excited about that team, and as we heard Coach Fleming say, it will be an experienced group stepping out on that floor next month when they return to action, and we can't wait to see what they're capable of. Coming up next on Bonnie's Insider, don't miss the opportunity to hear from a real-life superhero. That's right, one of St. Bonaventure's very own, a star on the field, a future first responder off. You're watching Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. You'll light candles with strangers the day you arrive and extinguish them with lifelong friends the day you leave this place. A place that will transform your life, inside and outside the classroom. A place where you'll learn to care about each other and about others you never imagined caring about. A place where people help you believe in yourself. For 160 years, St. Bonaventure University has helped good students become great people. Away from campus? No problem. You can follow Go Bonnies wherever you are on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Keep up with all your favorite squad. And don't forget to use the hashtag unfurl. Thanks for sticking around with us here on Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. Communication and teamwork are key skills for any great softball catcher. And while St. Bonaventure Junior Madison Stewart is putting those skills to good use behind the plate, the Orchard Park native is learning to use her skills and her drive to help others to one day be able to save individuals from burning buildings. This Bonnie standout is not only putting in work on the field and in the classroom, but she is also well on her way to becoming a volunteer firefighter in her local community. My grandpa, who lives in Philadelphia, was a Philly firefighter his whole life. He was a lieutenant there. My brother joined over a year ago and he loved it. I'd see videos of their drills and their training. I thought it was really cool. 
I just wanted to like follow in their footsteps, I guess. It's a long process as it is, but COVID pushed it back like so much. It's like probably a two month process, but it took like six months for me because of COVID, they couldn't process anything. Central Fire Company, they have been awesome. My chief has been super nice, has been pushing for me to get in and trying to get it, the process going faster. And he really helped with that. My fire training officer, put me in group chats with all of the active members to show that he's not going to be forgetting about me when I go off to college. So they've been super understanding and like really excited for me to come on board with them. So they've been awesome. But I told them last year, first semester, so this past year, and they were shocked, but my closer friends kind of knew that I, I've always wanted to do this and I would always talk about it and I'm super interested in it. So they weren't really surprised, but they were really happy for me. And this whole process, they've been by my side the whole time and having the dedication to wake up at like 4 30 5 o'clock in the morning do conditioning and go to class and then go to lift and go to practice and study on the road like that's a big challenge for some people and i think just the dedication aspect like in the fire department i have to be dedicated or it just won't work also communication since i'm a catcher i think definitely that'll help me because i'm not afraid to communicate especially and the communication is like the most important thing in in a burning building when you need you can't see anything and you need to be communicating with people in front of you and behind you i have so much respect for all first responders it's pro that's why my family owns a bar dedicated like giving back to first responders but volunteers definitely they they got to be a different kind of person to one, not get paid. Two, it's more than volunteer. It's, it's pretty much a full-time job. Especially with COVID, people weren't comfortable with going to calls and stuff, so they were struggling a lot because they needed people. And there's only one other girl that's active in the department, and she's mainly MS. And I thought that was kind of cool to be one of the only girls in the department, and they think it's cool too, so. I was looking at the big picture. I was talking about this with my family before I got accepted. I'm going for teaching, so I just think that it would be really cool to be a teacher, a girl, um, firefighter, and be able to tell my students that and kind of make women or girls want to grow up and be like, hey, I can do that, because they don't really see a lot of women in, in, fire, in the fire department, but um, I think that's really cool, and I thought that that was, I didn't really think about it when I made the decision to apply to be in, in the fire company, but um, I think that's, in the big picture, that's kind of going to be a good thing to be able to teach kids, especially in elementary school when they don't see a lot of female um, people in the fire department. Maddie is currently working on EMT courses in addition to hands-on firefighter training that she must pass to work on call at an active fire. We wish her the best and thank her for her efforts to make a difference in her community. That's all the time we have for Bonnie's Insider, but before we go, let's take a look at what we have coming up for next week's show. A lineup that includes the return of From the AD's office with Tim Kenny. We'll also be checking in with the men's lacrosse team to showcase their efforts raising money for cancer research. And over on the links, head golf coach Ryan Swanson swings by to make an appearance on our next Coach's Corner segment. As always, we appreciate everyone for tuning in. Join us again next week when Bonnie's Insider returns. I'm Tommy Valentine. So long and thanks for watching. Bonnie's Insider has been brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family.